Hello everybody, welcome to Captain of My Shed. I'm Captain Mikey and this episode is going to be the first in a three-parter all about this saw, the DeWalt 7485. And this first episode is going to be a review on what I think about this, having owned it for the best part of two years now. So, let's get stuck in. This review is going to be most useful for people who will look at this as a, a workshop tool, something that's going to be situated in a particular spot in their workshop, probably stay there 99% of the time and will be used for small woodworking or small to medium woodworking type tasks. It is a job site saw and that's not how I use it, but it is also a very popular small workshop saw, uh, which is exactly how I use it. And I have been using it that way for the last two years. I put it through its paces. I did do an unboxing video when I first got it. Since then, I've done a lot of all kinds of work. It's cut sheet goods, it's cut hardwood, softwood, rip cuts, cross cuts, resawing, cove cuts. Uh, if you can imagine a type of cut that you could do on a table saw, I've done it on this. I'll give you a quick overview of the specifications of this saw. And if I'm looking over here, it's because that's where I've got the specification written. I can't remember it all off the top of my head. So let's start with the blade it uses. 30 mil bore, 210 mil diameter blade, a depth of cut of 65 millimeters, as in when the blade is fully extended, 65 millimeters high above the table. A width of cut of 52 millimeters, all the way up to 62 millimeters. It has a couple of different settings. I'll explain those to you in a minute. 5,800 RPM motor, so it's plenty powerful, and it weighs 22 kilos, and it's nice and comfortable to manoeuvre if you need to. Full specification in the description below. Okay, let's get stuck into what I really like about it, and there is a lot that I like about it, a lot more that I like than I don't like. First of all, this fence is brilliant, I think. It's just got a, a locking lever over here. I'll try and get some close-up shots of this. And um, rack and pinion, a nice gauge here, nice and clear. I found it to be very accurate. Uh, and that will go out as far as 52 centimeters. It also has this flip stop so that when you have got uh, it extended out a long way, this will support the piece that you're working on. You've also got these levers to lift up, unclip the fence nice and easy so you can store it away when you're traveling with it or just if you want to move it out of the way. There are several pins here that will locate on each one of those pins. That gives you a 10 centimeter deeper cut <clears throat> or wider cut than this pin. And obviously, this pin over here means that if you need to, I've never needed to, but if you did need to, you can have it on this side as well. It's, it's really solid. I've never had an issue with it. That is one thing that I really do like about this. It's the fence. Fence also has this little storage clip for a push stick. Amazing that I've still got that push stick, and that's because it, it stows away nice and neatly in there. It's really good, that, as a safety feature, because it's too easy when you're cutting something and you're almost through, and you think, oh, I should use a push stick, but I can't find the damn thing. I'll just go through with my fingers, and that's when accidents happen. So uh, I think it's a great little safety feature, that. Brilliant. Saw also has 45-degree tilt mechanism that works pretty well and, uh, and again I found to be pretty accurate certainly accurate enough for my uh, requirements the other thing it's got which I really like is a very quick riving knife change there's a little knob in the back here just unscrew it you can easily reach it obviously make sure the saw's unplugged first remove your um, <clears throat> table guard and then reach in and out comes your riving knife, simple. Other things that I really like, I found it to be accurate. It might not be engineering levels of accurate, but this is woodworking. So this will get you 
close enough to your final dimension and leave you very little work to do in terms of sanding or planing to really refine that last refined dimension. I've found it plenty powerful. It has never really bound up on me unless I've been trying to do something ill-advised. And like I say, I have cut some nice big chunks of uh, oak through this, um, as well as ebony, mahogany. I've cut plenty, plenty of hardwoods through this and it's always performed just fine. I've never had an issue with the power of this uh, machine. That's been great. Uh, it does have some really nice safety features as well. You've got this flip down cover. It uh, just covers the uh, the on switch. Now, I uh, you may have seen in previous videos, I occasionally have little people wandering in and out of my workshop. It's a really nice feature to have that so that little hands can't push buttons that they shouldn't without you uh, noticing. Uh, obviously, you don't rely on that, but it is a nice extra barrier uh, and an extra safety point. Uh, as well with the start-stop switch, um, let's say that you have a power cut and then the power comes back on again or you turn the power on without having interacted with the switch at all, it won't come back on. You'll have to turn it back on, which I think is a, a decent safety feature as well. As well as the um, push stick storage, round the back is some interesting storage for the spanners that you use to take off the blade and change the blade. It also has a nice little storage place for, I, I can't do it because I've up, upgraded mine with this little bit of plywood just to make it a bit more of a versatile, a bit more of a versatile mitre gauge. Uh, but it's a decent mitre gauge, by the way. It is metal construction and uh, it's been it's been solid i just put this piece of wood on there just to give me a bit more support right up close to the blade but um it allows for that you've got the pre-drilled holes ready to to do things like that and uh yeah i found it to be pretty accurate a nice a nice little stock mitre gauge that and it has its own little home in here so they really thought those kind of things through when you want to go to a job site with this or if you do want to take it to a job with you you can take the fence off and it's got a little storage space out of the way down here, which is neat. Um, your mitre gauge has a little stowage that it can sit in and the spanners are locked in place there with a, a little wing nut. So everything is nice and tidily stowed away. You've also got a, a an integral, an integrated cable tidy. So ultimately, if you do want to move this about, you can pack it down really nice and small. You're not going to lose any of your bits and pieces that go with the table saw. It's really well thought through design. So really impressed with most of what this saw has to offer. And I would say at the, I mean, it's, I think it's approximately 500, between 400 and 500 pounds now. I think I bought this about 450 pounds two years ago. Um, at that price point, it's tough to complain. I think I would say it's earned its money in the time that I've had it. But I do need to talk about the downsides to this saw. And there are just a couple. Dust extraction, unfortunately, is not brilliant. I can show you inside here where the uh, dust has been clogged up over the last few days. I have actually had it where, because where that dust is stuck, um, and I've been pushing through quite a bit of timber, at some point it's got quite hot, and perhaps maybe you'd be, you're unlucky and you hit some metal or you shave some metal off and you get a hot little um, ember it lands in that sawdust and I have had that smolder before and luckily I've noticed it. So that's a bit unfortunate. It has got dust extraction. I, I, I know it's not a cabinet saw and as such dust extraction is, is, is I suppose, sort of an afterthought. Um, but it, not only does it get stuck up in that area, it also blows out from underneath the saw quite a lot. So it's, it's a messy saw to use in a workshop setting. There are ways you can upgrade. I have put like a little bit of a foam gasket around the metal housing for the saw, and that's helped a little bit. 
and possibly if I delved in there I could do a bit more but it's not ideal it's not a deal breaker by any stretch but uh, something to think about there is one thing about this saw that I have found to be a real problem unfortunately um, and it means that for me this saw is on borrowed time now um, and it's a bit of a fatal flaw let me show you what I mean I try to bring the blade up and it is really stiff to explain the problem to you I need to describe the mechanism that rises and or raises and lowers the blade you have uh, a steel lead screw a single one probably about a half inch and that raises and lowers the entire carriage that holds the blade and that carriage is made from a, a sort of alloy an aluminium alloy i think whatever it's made from it's softer than the lead screw when that lead screw gets dust in it which in it, it inevitably will because the dust extraction is not amazing over time it will happen you get pressure building up in that thread it gets tighter and now as you turn it the hard steel lead screw is biting in to that alloy carriage that holds the blade. Eventually, and what happened to me, luckily not while I had it running, I always stop the, the blade when I'm rising and lowering it. I tried to rise it and it had been stiff for a while and I pushed it a little bit too far and bang, the whole assembly fell down under the table and it would never rise again. I had to get the whole thing shipped off. This was one thing that DeWalt did very well. They put me in touch of a local DeWalt repair person. They did it all under warranty. It didn't cost me anything and it was relatively quick. Uh, they replaced the carriage, but already now, and I, I, that's only about six months ago, already now we're back into this stiff mechanism. I've looked online, it doesn't seem to be a completely unfamiliar problem to people. Uh, I think it is an issue with this saw. There are apparently things you can do to help avoid the problem, or at least delay the problem's onset, uh, mainly by lubricating the lead screw, but it must be done with a dry lubricant, not a grease or an oil. That will just gunk up the mechanism even further. Any dust that gets in won't be able to get out. Uh, but apparently there are some graphite based lubricants that work well that said the problem's already kind of arisen for me and uh, unfortunately where i'm looking to make a more serious workshop in the near future i don't think the dewalt will be a feature now if anyone out there has had experience with that problem please let me know put it down in the comments below i'd be really interested to find out do have a look at the unboxing video that's linked below if uh, you want to have a good idea of what to expect when you order this and, and when it gets delivered. So is this the perfect small workshop saw? I don't know about perfect but it's it's close it's a good purchase at that price point I don't think you can go too far wrong. Um, you've got excellent power, great accuracy, very versatile machine the way the fence works it also packs down really nice and neat if you do want to take it away on site with you to a job or whatever. I think it's a really good option and uh, it would be money well spent. Look after that thread mechanism and you might get a bit more time of it out of it than I did. I would say I had 18 months before it failed. Um, but I think if you look after it every, you know, service it every month or so, you'd probably get another year out of it, I would guess. But that is just a guess. Be interested to hear from you if you have had the same issue as I've had. Uh, put it in the comments below. And if you've managed to resolve it too, I think anyone watching would be interested to hear about that. So yeah, please put that in the comments below. If you've got any questions about the saw, ask me. And if I know the answer, I will, uh, I will respond. That's it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to go through how we get this running as sweetly as you possibly can making sure that your mitre guides are parallel with the fence and that the fence is parallel with the blade. And to do that, we're going to use this doohickey. I'll tell you where I got this. 
and how this works in, in order to accurately set up the blade. And also some of the fences and uh, jigs that I've made for it, for cross cutting, for, for cross cutting and mitre cut, and also a zero clearance slot. All the little upgrades you can do and things you can make for this saw that make it even more versatile than it already is. I'll get that video up just as soon as I can, but uh, for now, enjoy yourselves and we'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.